In 1965, a group of Armenians from Garabakh collected their signatures and appealed to Moscow with a claim about separating Garabakh from Azerbaijan and joining it to Armenia. The center will reject the claim, but the Armenians will not renounce their claim. After two years, on July the 3rd, 1967, a ten-year-old boy, Nelson Mosesian's corpse, will be found in the territory of Kurapatkina village in Khojavan district. The Armenians will blame three Azerbaijanis for this murder. Arshad Mehmadov, a teacher, headmaster of school, Zehra Mehmadov, his brother-in-law, and Alamshad Mehmadov, a watchman. They are all from Garadala village in Khojavan district. The investigators, Armenians, will accuse the Azerbaijanis, but they will not reply to the key question, what was the motive? The Armenians in court will state, shooting to all three, the court will pass a sentence. Alamshad Mehmadov shooting, Arshad Mehmadov 15-year imprisonment, Zahra Mehmadov excused. The enraged Armenians will try to break Alamshad and Arshad from the escorts. Zahra will manage to hide himself in a prisoner's car, but no one and nothing will save them. They will be killed, their bodies will be mocked at, then will be burnt in the presence of the children. Later, the secret about the Armenian child's death will be revealed and proven. The child was killed by Armenians, but the blame was laid on Azerbaijanis in order to prove Moscow that it is quite impossible for Armenians to live together with Azerbaijanis and to defend justice of the claim. And explosions will really happen. Later, flames spread over Garabakh. Armenian extremism will encourage a move to terrorism and terrorism will make a start to genocide. Within a few months, as a result of four terrorist acts committed by Armenians, Karadarli village will lose 12 innocent, peaceful people. Karadarli, it means those living in sadness in black days. What happened before the occupation of this village will be nothing in comparison with what its residents will expect afterwards. February the 17th, 1992. This was the very date when Garadali residents will witness the fires of hell, will live the rest of their lives with grief and die. They will be the people living in sadness, in black days. On September the 8th, 1991, the Karus bus was following the route Ardam Karadarli. There were over 40 passengers in it, and they were all relatives, close and distant. They were on the way back from the funeral. All roads about six kilometers were normal. Tayyar Aliyev, a passenger, was conversing with his neighbor. And all of a sudden, something horrific took place before his very eyes. <laughs> Bir neçə oturacaq qabaqda, Rəxşəndə Hüseynova. E, mənim şəxsən gördüyüm o oldu ki, güllə ona necə dəydisə, o, o, o qadın, e, yaşlı qadın idi. Oturduğu oturacaqdan güllə onu avtobusun tavanına vurdu. Blood spread up to knees over the floor of the bus. In a flash, the bus was riddled with gunfire. There was no place to hide. Women, elderly men and children turned to alive targets. Amma bir oğlandı, dal kapıda dayanmıştı, caban oğlan 19 yaşında. Ona ne kadar eledim, dedim ayak uzan yere, ayak uzan yere dedi, ay kişi de uzanar mı? Küll ona değdi o kapının ağzında. Benden sol tarafta Gülzende Hüseynova, Bahçeli kızı. Onun boyun nahiyesinden çok cuman çeşit sorular da bildik ki, bunun boyun nahiyesinden gülle değmişti. A two-kilometer road was under firing. The firing ceased when the bus approached Garadala village. 
At that time, six women and two fellows were killed. Seventeen people were wounded in the bus. There was no difference for Armenians whomever they killed. The main thing was just to achieve the goal, to form a fictitious state with false borders on the territories where they were received as at their own house. The beginning of the 19th century was the start of Armenians' mass resettlement from Turkey and Iran. As the archive sources of the Russian Empire say that 85,000 Armenians were settled for a short period. Indeed, their number increased a lot. The newly arrived Armenians were settled chiefly on the historical territories of Azerbaijan. Iravan, Zengezur and Karabakh became their homeland. By the beginning of the 20th century, the number of Armenians exceeded in southern Caucasus more than a million. They grew rich and strengthened their positions at the expense of privileges and allocations received from other states. However, they began putting forward political demands. By this time, such political parties as Armena Khan, Binchak, Dashnak Situn had been established. They strove only for one goal, to form the so-called the Greater Armenia on the territories of Turkey, Azerbaijan and Georgia. Terrorism has been chosen by these organizations as a method of struggle. The same terrorism didn't leave out Garadatli village. In 1905, 1906, massacres were carried out by Dashnak units in Shusha and other settlements of Garabakh as well as Garadahli village. Under the leadership of Stepan Shamyan, Anastas Mikayan, Amazasp, commander of Dashnak units and all over the territory of Azerbaijan, mass extermination of Azerbaijanis was organized in 1918-1920. 15,000 people in Baku, 10,000 in Shamakhe, 4,000 in Guba, 50,000 in Zengazur. In general, nearly 700,000 innocent people were killed in the mass extermination of Azerbaijanis on the whole territory of Azerbaijan in 1918-1920. In 1948-1953, by the decree issued by Stalin, mass deportation of Azerbaijanis from Armenia started and over 200,000 Azerbaijanis were forced to flee their homeland and move to Azerbaijan. The same recurred in 1988. Both cases of deportation were accompanied by acts of violence regarding Azerbaijani population. This was the very start of Armenia's war of occupation against Azerbaijan. The policy of artificial settling of Armenians on the territory of Azerbaijan led to the fact that Garadali village was wholly encircled by Armenian populated areas. During the four years from 1988 to 1992, confrontation between the local residents of this village and Armenian combatants continued. Owing to some raids of self-defense forces of Khojavan district, the majority of the population, particularly children, women and old men, were evacuated. February the 17th, 1992, subunits of Armenian combatants raided Garadali village on four sides. 188 persons, including 10 women, were gathered in the administrative building of Garadali farmhouse. They had no cartridges. An extract from the book My Brother's Road, written by Markar Melkonyan, a brother of Monte Melkonyan, an international Armenian terrorist, one of the authors and performers of the genocide in Garadala village. Now he, Monte, cold bloodedly put his gun B7 on his shoulder, took aim and squeezed the trigger. The first shell with a white flash and roar hit straight the window in the corner on the second floor, burnt everything inside and with a yellow flash burst back out of the window. The hostages were separated into old men, women and young people. Two lorries were standing nearby. The elderly men and women were ordered to get on the first lorry and fellows on the second. At this moment, one of the Armenian combatants seized Eldar Nariv by the scruff of the neck and dragged him. There was a dead silence around when the Armenians fired on him. Silently, one had to weep. Everybody was about to lose their voices. Not a single sound was heard, but the sound of a stick striking a bone and the moans. 
Öyle maşına binen de dene, yani ağaçına vurdular, başına başına. Öyle orada öldürdüler onu. Birinci onu öldürdüler. Biz de bakırıq maşının içinde. Ne koyduk? Elacımız nedir? Ondan da kaydılar Allah ölenlerin rehmet eylesin, istemirin deyim yarası təzələnini gəlinin atasın. Dediler falan kes düş aşağı. Hiç bilmedim ne ile vurdular, ne ter vurdular, kişinin boşarılandı, boş arılandı, beden arılandı. Kurdular maşın altına başlayan cihletler. Tiket cihletler. After the violence, Armenians ordered to drive off the lorry. Those who sat in the body of the lorry saw fatally wounded Aligismat. He was lying at the doors of the administrative building and the only thing he could do was to smile and wave his hand with difficulty. In any case, nothing has been known about the fate of Aligismat and other wounded persons as well as those three children who were put not in the lorry but in the car of an Armenian commander by his order. Bizde az yaşlı uşaqlar var idi, üç nəfər. Şeynov İbrahim Həbib oğlu, Əliyev Xalik Məhrəm oğlu, bir də Şeynov Niftalı Bakır oğlu. Gətdilər maşının arxasına, bunları da gətirəndə mən hələ yerdə idim, dəyən maşına mindirməmişdilər. Bunların komandiri var idi, Mamver deyirdilər, Mamehcan Mamehcan deyirdilər, Mamver idi adı, nə idisə belə deyirdilər. Qara formada başı çalmalı, buralar başında da yazılar var idi da, yermənin dilində idi, nəyəsə oxumaq olmur. Bir də qollarını bax bu hissədə, qara forma. Bu dedi ki, bunları, yermənlərə dedi ki, onları mindirmin, onları öz maşınımda apıracaq. Bu altı cüqlüsü var idi, yaxşı rəkdə. The lorry with the young hostages stopped at the place called Beylik Bağı, the groom's garden. There was a tractor nearby. Ten of the hostages were ordered to get off. No volunteers got off. All knew what would be expected. Then the Armenian combatants behaved in a different manner. Onda mən yaralandım. Orada çənəm qırıldı mənim. Tam ağzımdadım. Yaralandı mən orada. Tabi özüm itidim mən. Itidim. Ayıldım ki, 24 nəfər sağ adam qalmış kamazın içində. From the book, My Brother's Road, written by Markar Melkonyan, a brother of Monte Melkonyan, an international Armenian terrorist. The soldiers of Aramo and Araba units began firing on the captives and killed them with knives, all without exception. Scar Edo, one of five militants of the patriotic unit from Ashtarak, poured petrol and threw the burning match on some of the wounded soldiers. By the moment, Monte approached the ditch in which there were heaps of remains. Çin deyirlər, Çinlər də bir az böyük. Sən onların başlarını kəsib salafan qulaqlaya yığırdılar. Mobil Valiyev, one of the hostages, was spared too. He cried out that he had six daughters. The Armenian combatants mocked at him and let him free. Dedilər, düş səni öldürməyəcək. Qaş git. Orada da bəlif bağ deyilən yer. Düz tut bağı idi. Orada dediler, kaç biri, on metri kaçmağının ikisi durdu, arkadan avtomat koydu. Böyle avtomatın daldığını piştiler, her iki kez bir tarafa düştü. Vidade Hüseynov was also among the hostages. The bullet wounded him and didn't kill. He rolled about and fell on the bushes. The Armenians didn't notice him. It was getting dark when Vidade opened his eyes. A sharp pain pierced through his body. But hearing an Armenian speech, he could hardly contain himself. Üç dənə ermənidir, bizdə yuxarı bir kənd var, cəmiyyət kəndi deyirlər. Səslərdən tanımlı ermənləri. Ki, bu ermənlərdir. Gəldi bir deyir ki, bu belədir, bu helədir, gəl paltarını soyunak, gəl qulağını kəsək, gəl başını kəsək, gəl paltarını soyunak, bu ermənlər bir-birinə deyir. Meanwhile, the lorry with the young hostages reached the Zaki Spring. There, Şamxal Şirinov notices that those three children whom the Armenian commander put in his own car are out. They don't exist today either. They killed some of the Azerbaijanis near the spring too. Sinif yoldaşım vardı, Rasiyadan əskəkdən gəlmişdi Nəbi, Quliyev Nəbi mütalif oğlu. Məndən üç metr aralıda iştiqnoy ilə diri-diri başını kəsdilər. Neytlər də orada elə kəndin qırağında quyu basıb, amma bizim gözümüz qabanda quyu qazıb basdılar orada. Traktoruna. Və Abdullahını gətdilər, maşından düşüktü, gətdi, 
Kamağın arkasını açtı, başından tapancağını dirildi, dedi, kanı iç. Türk'ün kanı içmelisin. O da gördü, böyle çekti yüzüne içmeliydi. O da başından tapancağını dağıyla vura vura parla, mindirdi ben maşını. Arkada da bir oğlu oturmuştu. Ve onun maşından saldılar yeri, benim gözümü kabağına götürüp makar tapancağıyla 8 tane sonra onu güllelediler. Yani onu da miydi orada sonra. Biraz geçmişti, sonra Xallov Zahid, gene de onlar. Onu orada güllelediler. Beginning from Jamiyat village, occupied by Armenians to Hankende, the lorry with hostages was accompanied by Armenian men, women and children who were informed in advance that Azerbaijani hostages would be driven along that road. In order to slake the thirst of these Armenians, the combatants decided to kill another hostage. It was Bayram of Elmidar's turn this time. Tork istiyorsanız, Müslüman istiyorsanız, onlar da dedi, akışkırdılar dediler, ha. El orada da onu çürttüler, orada da onu öldürdüler. They shot with applause. The local Armenians were armed to teeth. With rakes, pitchforks, particular stones. Hansa so öndürdüler, fevral ayın 17'si demeli elimizde kaldı, bir nazi sarışka. Onunla başka hiçbir şey. Lütfen patinkaları çıkarttırıblar. Uşakların elinden hamımızın, ha bir benim yok, hamımızın. Soyundurublar, ayak yalın bak böyle çorabını. The hostages were placed in a specially built prison in Hankende. The next morning they were driven out to the drill square. Chief warders with clubs, competent with machine guns and the Armenian audience who were eager to watch how we would be beaten, mocked and killed. Orada da azı üstte uzandırdılar bizi yerde karın üstünde. Allah and olsun, seherden akşama kimi yonun bu tarafa bu tarafa üstümüzle gelip boynumdan dalınan kimi ki bir beçere hareket edilir, bunun dağına vurum. We were physically and morally tortured. Each step in the passage meant an approaching death, the start of a regular torture, beatings, floggings, outrageous behavior. Şura çiçeği vardı, söyün of şura. Onu aparırlar, döydüler, geldi, iki gün kaldı, yanımızda şehit oldu. Gözümüzün kabağında bak böyle, kışkıra kışkıra öldü. Fazıl abla oğlan var idi, onu ne kadar burada tepin edilir, ben de burada hazırım, mərdəsini. Orada da səhəri, səhəri yaxın burada gördük ki, yazıq kışkırdı, belə keyliydi ha. Xırıldı. Keçini xırıldı, ilaç sağ ol. Xırıldı, ilaç sağ ol. Xırıldı, ilaç sağ ol. Üç gün onu meydin, biz başımızı koymuşuz, bu durun üstünde yatmışız, meydin yağmur, meydin bir yer. Enjoying the taste of murder, Armenian combatants, without noticing themselves, turned from vandals to real cannibals. Aladdin Mamado was savagely beaten in the room of torture. The walls of the room were plastered with pieces of broken glass. It is not difficult to understand. The old man couldn't stand it and hit the combatant. He shouted to kill him, but the Armenian pressed the knife on his throat. <laughs> Ocak tuttular, boğazımdan tuttular. Boğazımdan bu sefer gördüm ki karnımı da isti vurdu. Karnımı isti vuran da ağızıyla böyle tuttu. Boğazımdan yapıştı. Öyle onu tanıyorum. Demek ki buranı yaralayandan sonra bu kolum da buraya. Gördüm ki boğazımı sümürür, karnımı sümürür ben. Vatan Aliyev, a resident of Garadağlı village, who was among the hostages. Nothing is left from him except this black and white photo. That day, a chief warder came to the cell and wanted two hostages to clean the rooms. Məni gətirib, içəri salmaq istəyəndə, gördüm qapının ağzında iki uşaq durur, əllərində gül var, gül dəstəsi. Hə, gül dəstəsi var, məni içəri saldılar, bu vətən dediyimi döndərdilər üzə o uşaqlara tərəf. Uşaqlara tərəf apardılar, elə o gedən getdi, onu gətirmədilər. Onu apardılar. Sonra, bir xeylaqdan sonra, elə belə maraq üçün soruşdum ki, oğlanı hara apardılar? Dana ermənin birinə soruşdum. Dedik ki, apardıq qəbir üstünə. Apardıq qəbir üstünə başını kəsirlər, öldürürlər də belə. Mən dedim ki, sizin məqsədiniz nə idi ki, o başları kəsirdiniz belə? Mən ucaq hər şey gözümün qabağından ucaq həyatımı yaşamaq kimi. Dedi ki, biz bilirsiniz bunlara nə qədər biz pul qazanacaq Ermənistanda, biz bu başlara aparacaq nə qədər pullar qazanacaq xaricdə. Removal of gold teeth. This was a kind of torture to become rich. There were many hostages with gold teeth. They had a strong wish for them. It was quite useless to hide. 
Geldi dedi ki, kimin kızı dişleri var, çıksın şöyle. Girip bir bir yoklayacağım. Ne diyordu, diyordu, kimse ama yoklayacağım. Kimse kızı dişleri var, tavsam öldüreceğim. Bu yerde kapıdır, kapında forçkası var. Forçkanı gelirdi, ne zor böyle kaldırırdı, dedi bura gel. Kimin ağzında dişi, kızı dişi var. Gittik, başım diye çıkartmaktı, mecbur çıkartır. Neyini? Çıkartmayan da gel, dövürdüler, öldürürdüler, vururdular. Başımızı böyle çıkartan da, forçkanı sağlardı, böyle boynumuzun dağılır. Baş kaldı, çöldü de da mecbur çekip çıkartmak olmuyor. Kafetin sağlardı, çekirdi, çıkartırdı. Ben dişlerimin bir ikisi öyle kızılın üstüne gitti. Diş karşısı çıktı. In a hostage wish to have a quick death, but the Armenian combatants killed gradually. Sometimes they neither beat nor shot. It gave them great pleasure to kill a person morally. Kizler içeri dediler size değişmeyi yok sizden böyleyince iki nefer ölmeliydi. Düzdüler bizi içeri üç nefer ediler. Silahı çektiler. Bir bir hamurun başına tuttular silahı, pistoleti. Ki siz ölmelisiniz. Her insanın başında iki gül attılar. Yani vurmak için değildi. Yani menevi öldürmek için gitti. O zaman diyelim o uşaklar güllere mi? O çöp uşaklar da bizi güllere mi? Diyelim sen bir ayakın Jordan'ın bir ayakın da burada mesela sürüp elmen deniyoruz. Azerbaycan dili yakışı çizdi böyle mi? Burada da diyelim ki ben diyelim bu zamanlar bu günü görüp sen bu uşaklar bir sabah benimle kısa salacağım. Sabah ben aktaracağım, ben öldüreceğim, elimi ben öldüreceğim. The women and some of the captivated men from Karadağlı were sent to Eskeran a day after their arrival in Hankende. They were kept there until they were freed. Some men could not live to that day. This woman saw with her very eyes how the fellows were beheaded. Biri yıktılar yere, dana nece, dana öyle. Elin saldı buruna, başın kesti. Ben, ben öyle terdiyim. The morning of February the 26th, 1992 came. All night the hostages in Askeran heard the shootings. Armenians fired from tanks and guns. The ground was shuddering. At five in the morning, women, children and old men were brought to Askeran. The faces of many of them looked inhuman. What violence the Armenians committed towards these hostages cannot be described. The human language doesn't have expressions to describe exactly the scene which these women witnessed. Hamısını ele kör bu uşaqların başın kestiler. Ay ay ay ay ay ay ay ay ay. Sen bunların hamısını gördün mü orada? Hamısını gözümle görmüşüm. Gelinler, körpü uşağı, 10 günlü uşağı ananın elinden aldılar. Onca günlü uşağı. From the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. In the present convention, genocide means any of the following acts committed with intent to destroy, in whole or in part, a national, ethnic, racial or religious group, as such, killing members of the group, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life, calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part, imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group, forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. From Geneva Convention about treatment with military prisoner dated the 12th of August 1949. In the case of armed conflict, not of an international character occurring in the territory of one of high contracting parties each party to the conflict shall be bound to apply, as a minimum, the following provisions. Persons taking no active in the hostilities, including members of armed forces, who have laid down their arms and those placed hors de combat by sickness, wounds, detention, or any other cause, shall in all circumstances be treated humanely, without any adverse distinction founded on race, color, religion, or faith, sex, birth or wealth or any other similar criteria. To this end, the following acts are and shall remain prohibited at any time and in any place whatsoever with respect to the above-mentioned persons. Violence to life and person, in particular murder of all kinds, mutilation, 
cruel treatment and torture, taking of hostages, outrages upon personal dignity, in particular humiliating and degrading treatment, the passing of sentences and the carrying out of executions without previous judgment, pronounced by a regular constituted court, affording all the judicial guarantees which are recognized as indispensable by civilized peoples. Two articles from these two conventions have such a striking similarity with the bloody events in Garadala village. There's a very simple explanation for it. Armenian combatants at the head of Monte Melkonyan, Manvel, Robert Kocharyan, Serge Sarkisyan did their utmost. Garadali is a real genocide and everybody must know this. People wrote these conventions for the sake of peace. Armenian terrorism proved that they were only for being quoted. Who is Monte Melkonyan? Here's an extract from his brother Markar Melkonyan's book, My Brother's Road. Following all political realists, Monte adopted such a position. The goal proves its means. Yes, Arabo and Aramo are bloodthirsty. And meanwhile, they are brave militants at the time when there's a great demand for brave militants. Such notions as bloodthirst and bravery may coincide only from the terrorist viewpoint. In this sense, we can believe the author of these lines as his so-called brave brother killed innocent people in Europe with the very bloodthirst, got involved in drug and firearms trafficking. And this is not a fabrication. Here is a photo of the man who is considered to be one of Armenian nationality's enemies because he called national hero of Armenia Monte Melkonyan Dragon Firearms Trafficker and accused him of innocent people's murder. He has done this because he knew him personally. Ted Bogosian, an Armenian political essayist and filmmaker. And Monty was born in about the same year uh, in the Central Valley of California. And he was pursuing the truth about the genocide in his own way. And he became radicalized and he went underground and started selling arms and started selling drugs and started um, uh, an Armenian terrorist movement. And so while I was making Armenian Journey, he was in jail in France for having masterminded several bombings in Europe at Orly Airport and at Turkish embassies and other businesses where many innocent people were killed. And so I, I went to see Monty in prison. And it was quite a moment because he thought that I was there to kill him since he didn't know who I was and wasn't expecting a visitor that day. Revenge for nothing. Revenge for the never existing state. Revenge for the country that the Armenian terrorists want to form by means of violence. They will inflict violence on all who will be against this way until the peoples unite against this illegality. At the end of our talk, this old man, by the way, was also the former captive of Armenians and a witness to all horrors uttered a striking phrase that will be a finale to this film and the start of restoring his hope for peace. <laughs> Hele hele de başımda kalıp. Ne var? Hele şimdi.